Good morning. How y'all doing? Well, we use this week to reset, refocus, and then improve. You know, as we get back into Big Ten play, you know, our, our kids got to look at this as a fresh start. As a, you know, just a, a brand new start in Big Ten play. It'll be our second Big Ten football game. Indiana on offense presents a lot of problems. They had 104 snaps versus Cincy last week. They snap it faster than third fastest team in the country snapping the ball. So it's going to present a problem for our, our defense. But at the end of the day, it's homecoming. It's a night game. And we're excited to get back in front of our fans in Memorial Stadium. Questions? How do you counter that pace that Indiana's going to come at you with, on your, especially with the defense, knowing some of the issues you guys have had this year? Well, my thing is um, get the calls in. Bill's got to get the calls in, and we got to execute the call. Well, we gave them off. We gave them off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, brought them back Sunday. So give them time to let their body heal, let them get away from football, let them get with their families. So that's the things we did this, this past weekend. Kevin Williams wasn't on the 2 deep. Is there an update on him? And just sort of how do you feel about your, your O-line setup right now and maybe Piper having a bigger role? Yeah, Piper was started up left guard. Kevin, Kevin will be out, he had surgery, had high, high ankle sprains, so he had surgery, so he'll be out maybe two to three weeks, three, two to three more weeks. But, you know, at the end of the day, the ball's going to kick off Saturday, so we got to get our best five on the field, but Piper will start at left guard. Thank you, what was the competition like during practice last week? I know you parked on Nebraska versus Nebraska. Did you see that? Yes, I did. It was really good competition. We got after each other. And today, we, we was getting ready for Indiana, and I was happy with their effort today. Because we talked about effort between you and you. And they gave us that today and last week. Mickey, there was times in the past where some of the defenders said that the, the calls weren't getting in at a good pace. How do you change that, especially with the changeover on the defensive side? Well, sometimes with tempo teams, you're going to get a call in. So the next call, they got to get their eyes over to the sideline right away and get the call. And it's, it's got to be one, one, one word's got to tell you everything, the front, the coverage, the blitz. So we do a lot of one word things, but the, the linebackers have to really get the calls from the sideline and the safeties have to get the signals so we can get going. Nicky, it's a, a night game Memorial Stadium. I know you played here, but you know, first night game as a head coach, does it feel a little different knowing what the night games are kind of like here in Lincoln? No, it doesn't feel different because at the end of the day, it's football is a football game. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but night, morning, we have to play football. And everything special. It's always special to me when I can walk into Memorial Stadium. It's always special, night, morning, afternoon. But this is homecoming. It's a night game. Like I said, we're going to be excited to be back in front of the fans. What do you think Bill Bush can do in a short amount of time, two weeks, to, to maybe change the defense or transform it a little bit? Well, he, he, we eliminated some things that we, we did in the past, but Bill's not out there by himself. He's the, 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 the D-line coach, the linebacker coach, and the secondary coach, they're all working together, and they're working together well. I told those guys yesterday how I appreciate them jumping on board. So they, 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 they've been meshing, and it's, sometimes it's hard to do that, but they've been meshing. But Bill's sharp. Bill's a really good football coach. He understands what I want. I get, you know, I got to see him in action at LSU, you know, with, with Dave Aranda. So he knows what I want. He knows what he's doing. What about that experience at LSU made you believe in Bill for this role? But like I said, I competed against him every day. I went against him every day. He was thorough about what he was doing, and we shared notes all the time. And he was detailing what he was doing. And he coached, he coached some really good football players, but he also coached some, some kids that was average that looked good, you know, because of the – he's a great teacher. And that's what you got to be to be a good football coach. You got to be a great teacher. What makes a good teacher? Detailing things, you know, knowing how the kid learns. It goes back to, you know, teaching. That's why, you know, teachers are special people in this world because they, they, they have to look at a kid and say, okay, this kid learns this way, this kid learns this way. And Bill's doing that. Bill's breaking it down. And so is the other, the other guys on the defensive staff. The offensive staff are doing the same thing. It was great. It was great. You know, everybody still loves Nebraska. All our commitments are still in. 
we had one um, one D commit, but we can understand that. But everybody, the reception was great with all the coaches. Thank you so much. It's only been 16 days, I think, we've been the interim. But have things slowed down for you? Um, is there a comfort level that you feel like you've achieved to a certain degree? I think coming back from New Orleans, it slowed down for me because I got to get out on the road as the head coach. I got to have an off week as the head coach. You know, thrown into the fire the first week. That's okay. That that happens. That happens. And you, you just got to bow your neck and get going. But except it has, it slowed down for me. And um, and I had to do that. I had to sit back and just think about things and then and slow it down myself. And I did that. Okay, how was that reception for you? And what was that experience like getting back home the first time in this role? Did you get to, I know you're here for business, but did you get to see some friends and family too? Yes. Some some are dead, but everybody wants a job. Everybody wants a job. Everybody had answers. So, you know, it was good to see old friends. It was good to see old coaches, but everybody had all the answers and everybody wanted a job. So, straight, typical New Orleans. How do you feel about your running backs? Uh, Mickey, I, I mean, you mentioned the AJ Allen injury last week, but Gabe Ehrman stepping into a bigger role. What do you feel about that group now going forward? Well, we, you know how we feel about AG. Grant's a really good player and really confident in, in Gabe. Gabe ran the ball well at the end of the game against OU. Let me tell you about Gabe. Gabe's a high character kid. When things didn't go his way, he didn't sit on the sideline and pout. He bowed his neck. He waited for the, until he got his opportunity and he took advantage of it. So we have a, a lot of confidence in Gabe. Mickey, what's been the most difficult part about taking over as an interim coach so far? Just learning, you know, you know, thanks to Andrew and my crew over there and you know, just you know, just learning everything, just kind of taking everything in. It's a lot. It's a lot to do. Like I don't really enjoy this. You know, I really don't. To tell you the truth, I, I'm not that type of dude that want to be in front of the cameras all the time. But it's it's what bring. That's what the job brings. So I have to do it. But I got to depend on my my guys. You know, Keith and everybody and Matt to help me with this. And I'm always open. The, and the, the the people that help me the most are the players because they're bought in and no resistance. They bought into what we're trying to do. But it's, it's, it wasn't easy. It's not easy. You mentioned last week about maybe over the course of the week there'd be some younger guys who surfaced. Do you, are there some guys you would even feel comfortable mentioning who you think are on the cusp of, of helping you that haven't been in main roles yet? Or, or how do you feel that's happening as far as depth with the younger guys? Well, we have some younger guys that, that we want to look at. You know, Malcolm's, Malcolm's one of them. Malcolm's going to play some corner. Gold's going to play some safety. We're trying to find our best 11 guys and get them on the field. And, you know, so we got to find those guys. And so we're going to go through those young kids and see if they can get it done. And if they can get it done, we'll give them some reps on Saturday. But they've been, they've been great the last – today and last week, they've been great. What's your, what's your message to young guys, like, in their first year of college football in the portal era to stay with it, you know, to stay patient? What, what do you tell them? Guys? Well, you got to keep encouraging them, and you got to let them know when their time comes that they got to be ready to go. And then you got to put them in the game, and that's what we're going to do. We got to put them in the game and see what they can do. But you're right; we have to. You have to recruit. You have to recruit your team right now with the portal. Mickey, how much you know with all the change that's happened to this point in the season and some of the rough results? I mean, how much would it mean? How much do you think? Where would the team go if they were able to get a win? How important would that be if they did? Pick up a win? I think it's important. I think. Beating Indiana is, is, is a number one goal, but it's really important for this football team just to get some confidence that they can that they can start something and finish it. And that's our goal, to beat Indiana. Hey, Mickey, where is uh, Ernest Hausman at in the conversation? I, I don't think I saw him on the depth chart yesterday. Is he, is he still in the mix of linebackers? He's just going to be more special to me. He's going to be both, but he's still in the mix. He's still in the mix at linebacker also. Where does he need to come the furthest to kind of get, get back up there? With all those young kids, just – you ask me, it has a slowdown for them. It has a slowdown in, in their head. You know, this game is a fast game compared to Friday nights. Saturday afternoons and Saturday nights are really fast. So he had to slow down for him. But he's an intelligent kid. He's a really good athlete. And he's just got to keep developing. But he's always going to be in the mix. Thank you. What, what are you doing to prepare your team for the Temple of Indiana this week? Working with the scout team, getting them lining up quick and having the guys recognize, recognize the formation and then snap the ball. But the thing, recognize the formation, get your feet in the ground, and then let's go. Let's play football.
But in case he turns, in case he turns 24 next week, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to load this question up too much. But how much does it help your nerves to have a veteran guy at that position? Casey's 24. Man, I've been knowing Casey. I've been knowing Casey for um, since he's a baby. But it's good. It's good. It's a, it's a veteran. I mean, it's, it was back in the old Nebraska days when you, when you had all those fifth-year seniors out there and everybody was 24 years old. So that's okay because it's no it's no rush to to get out there in the world. I know they, in the NFL says, "Oh, we want them to be young," but usually those young kids going in they're not mature enough. But we, I didn't know Casey was going to be 24. I thought he was younger than that. But um, it's good to have a veteran quarterback at 24. That's that's old. Maybe how are you doing it? They've been receptive because we talked to them about Sunday, about team unity, about being one, and everybody to do their job. But they've been very receptive of what's going on. Like I said, the kids been great. The kids have bought in. They've been great. With everything that they've been through, they've been great. They haven't blanked. They're moving forward. How much more uh, in the last month communication have you had with Trev, and how much is he a sounding board for when you want to vent? Well, we talk. You know, just the normal talk like before I took this job. You know, we meet on Sundays. But we don't talk every day, you know. I talk to my brothers every day. My, you know, I don't talk to people every day. Hey, Mickey, the uh, offense took a step back in the last game. What do you want to see over the next five days before the uh, game get back on there? We want to be more consistent. We want to keep the drives going. We got to be better on third downs. And we talked about that. Whip, Whip understands that. But I'm, I'm sure that the kids, they understand it also. But I'm sure that we'll be better Saturday. They get kicked and pop returns going. We gotta, we gotta hold up. You're talking about the Charlie unit, the punt return unit. We gotta hold up on, a, on, a, on the outside, and we, we gotta force the return. We gotta force the return. We're looking for one of those special teams to make a big play this week. We need one of them to make a big play, and we challenged them with that. Mickey, you have sort of this, this national coaching search sort of background of this season. Did you address with the guys at all um, at any point, like, hey, you guys are gonna have some distractions? You might see a bunch of rumors. How did you address that if you, if you did? Well, we always talk about blocking out the noise. So we're not going to worry about who's, who the search firm is talking to because, like I said before, Nebraska deserves to have a national search. And like our interview is right now. You know, in the next eight games, that's your interview. So we can't do anything about that. And we always talk to them, control what you can control. We, we can't control that. So we're going to block out the noise and we're going to focus on Indiana. Coach. Yes, tremendous improvement. They're flying around, they're thudding up, tremendous improvement. Like I said, they bought in. What does Lamar Brown bring to that initial spot that's going to be a little different than what he would have been asked to do with more of the team? Well, he's a kid. He's, he's very athletic. We wanted to get him closer to the ball. Um, we like his coverage skills. Because at safety, at safety, you've got to be a combination of a linebacker and a corner. And a nickel, you got to be you got to be the same. And we like we like his covering skill, covering slots. We also know that he'll stick his face in the fan and make tackles already. But he's he's very athletic, and we want to get him closer to the ball. Couple more, coach. Coach, what you do Saturday? Do you watch some college football? And you stand out. No, I watch college football. No, I was recruiting. I was at a nine o'clock a nine o'clock practice. Then I went to. a a two o'clock game, then I went to a six o'clock game. I don't have time to watch other other guys play. I didn't even watch my brother play. I don't even know. If, I I didn't find out they lost until Monday morning talking to him. I I'm focusing on what's going on at Nebraska. I don't really have time to watch games like that. What, uh, what intrigues you and Coach Bush will talk tomorrow about Hart? Because he hadn't played much until now. He's on the depth chart. What intrigues you about him? Malcolm's, Malcolm's a go getter. He's a tough kid from Mississippi that don't blank. It's not too big for him. He was a really good player coming out of high school. And he's, like I said, he's a smart kid. We just got to get him reps. But he deserves to get in there and have a chance to play. He, he was kind of a late, late bloomer. Uh, just was the way that uh, Nebraska's coaches described Was mm -hmm. he on LSU's radar at all? Or did that happen late or, 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 or not really? No, I don't think he was on LSU radar. But you know, when I left LSU, I, don't, I didn't know who they were recruiting. And I didn't care who they were recruiting. Thank you guys.